All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm William Bloom from Microsoft. Um, I'm part of uh, an incubation team at Microsoft where we take research uh, from Microsoft Research and try to turn, turn it into product. Uh, so the product I work on is called Microsoft Security Risk Detection. Uh, it's basically, uh, think of it as a cloud service that you can use to test your software and uh, try to find security vulnerabilities in it. And so um, I'm going to just give you a quick demo of how it works and then explain you, you know, the, our journey using F Sharp and you know, some neat features of F Sharp that we used along the way to build this, uh, this product. So basically, it's a, uh, a, the way you use the service is a website, so you connect to it. Uh, you have um, uh, a list of submissions. So submission is think of it as pieces of code that you would submit to the service that you want to test for security vulnerabilities. Uh, so we support both Windows and Linux code. You go to that website, you create a submission. Uh, what happens is that then we create a virtual machine for you in Azure. And then you connect to that virtual machine where you install your code. It could be, I don't know, Adobe Reader, uh, Office, or any library that you want to test. And then you go through a questionnaire. We ask you some uh, information about the, the, the application that you want to test. And you submit it. And then uh, we take it from there. We uh, spin up VMs in Azure. We install security tooling on it. And we run automated testing. We discover uh, bugs, we assess them, and give you a nice report showing you the bug that we found, the, if we believe that those bugs could be exploited, and you know you can download the zip file and try to repro locally. Now, the interesting thing is, if you look at our tech stack, uh, it's very typical for a Microsoft product. Uh, I met somebody yesterday from um, uh, Jet.com who was surprised that Microsoft is actually using F Sharp to build a product. Uh, so actually, yes, we are. Uh, I'm not, we are not the only team uh, that said uh, a lot of the people who are using F Sharp at Microsoft from Microsoft Research, uh, this is one of the rare products that's entirely, I mean, not entirely, but mostly built with F Sharp from, from the get go. And so what you see, this is a snapshot from uh, the code base. Uh, we have about 60% of uh, F Sharp, and that includes all the back end, um, the front end API, the client code that we run on the VM. Uh, some operation scripts, we use a lot of F-Sharp Interactive uh, to, to run scripts to, to do maintenance. The core API is also F-Sharp. Uh, we do not use uh, Fable, we do not use Safe yet, uh, uh, simply because at the time it was not available. We started four years ago, and we looked at technology like this, but uh, it was not ready yet. But um, I think I'm convinced by your talk, and um, we're going to look into rewriting everything <laughs> using Fable. Oh, safe, uh, very exciting talk. Um, so we have a bit of PowerShell, and we're also looking at moving away from PowerShell, actually, for deployment. Uh, we realize there's a lot of redundancy uh, with the F-sharp code that we have, uh, and it tends to be very brittle and breaks very easily. So we're actually using more and more F-sharp. We use fake as well uh, to do operation in a, in a service. And we build everything on top of Azure. So we use Azure for deployment, of uh, virtual machines for compute, network, storage. We use Service Fabric, and we also have a, a dependency on fuzzing technologies like security testing technology that we bundle uh, in, in the service. So why F Sharp? Uh, there's different ways to advocate for F Sharp. For me, for this particular project, there were three reasons. Uh, speed, correctness, elegance. Uh, speed, I mentioned about the fact that we are an incubation team. Uh, we had to build a prototype in just three months. And so uh, we had a go, no go meeting at the end of those three months. And we had to build something to ship to customers to prove that we uh, actually had, um, we, had, we could build something that was usable and that was uh, market for it. And uh, uh, I'll cover some features of F Sharp that we use, but you know, a lot of the um, agility that you have with F Sharp, um, the, 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 the speed of prototyping with F Sharp was really critical for us. Uh, correctness, again, so we started with a small team of three developers. Uh, with three developers, you don't have a lot of time to allocate for testing. And uh, the correctness guarantee that you have with a stati statically typed uh, programming language like, like, like F Sharp were another important component for us. Elegance is, again, something that might not be uh, something people think uh, in terms of uh, you know, what you want to do when you build an MVP, but it turns out, um, although it's subjective, 
there are a lot of uh, nice uh, features of F# -sharp succinctness, you know, composability, um, the type providers, those things that makes it fun to program with F# -sharp and actually makes it um, exciting for people to come to work. And when it's when it's time to to grow the team, it turned out to be a really big plus uh, for us to uh, to use F# -sharp, uh, when we when it was time to hire talents, for instance. Uh, sometimes I get the, um, the question, why not using C-sharp? Uh, after all, C-sharp has lambdas, right? Uh, of course, everybody here knows that functional programming is not just about having lambdas. The bunch of uh, uh, core features that you expect in the functional programming language that are completely built in in F-sharp and you don't have in C-sharp. Uh, but it's true that C-sharp is catching up and they you know, keep adding more features uh, to the language. But there are some that it will never be able to implement. And for instance, uh, immutability by default will never be something that you have in C Sharp, just simply because it's going to break everything, or the C Sharp code base that uh, already exists. Um, and type providers, and as an example of something that's not currently planned. Uh, so correctness, I like to quote John Carmack, who is a famous game developer. Uh, he uh, wrote those uh, video games like Doom and Quake that you probably uh, played with when you were younger. And he has a blog post where he explained that uh, he ran static code analysis on the uh, code base of a video game. And what, what happened is, so of course, the C, C++ code, they realized that the top two categories of bugs that they had were null pointer the reference and printf formatting errors. And when you look at f -sharp code, is some of the two uh, classes of bugs that would just disappear almost immediately as you start using option types. Or for our logging, for instance, we use printf formatting uh, for tracing. So that's uh, one example uh, of correctness. Uh, Don Sim yesterday mentioned about domain modeling. So we use records, uh, abstract data types, uh, discriminated union everywhere. Those are not features specific to F Sharp. It's again something you expect in any functional programming language, like OCaml has it as well. Uh, but it's really a nice, succinct way to describe the types. And uh, many people have talked about it uh, during this conference, so you are familiar with it. Um, and that something really nice uh, that we use is a type provider. I'm not sure if people are familiar with this type provider. It's a type provider for Swagger. And so we use that to discover Azure API. So Azure is a complex beast. Uh, the API is very complex. It changes all the time. And reading the docu documentation doesn't, just doesn't work. You want to be able to play with the API and you know, create VMs and explore what you have deployed in Azure. And here with just three lines of code, we could just point uh, the provider to the URL of the Swagger interface for the compute API of Azure. And two lines of code here, uh, we, we can just enumerate all the VM on the subscription and you know, do a count by, for instance, to get the count of VMs uh, per, you know, by VM size, for instance. And so we, we use that a lot uh, to discover Azure APIs. Uh, for this one, I'm going to uh, give you uh, a quick demo. So what happened is uh, in Azure, I don't know if many of you use Azure for um, infrastructure as a service, but the way you deploy resources is by, um, let me see if I can show you this thing on the screen. There you go. So basically on the left, what you see is a JSON file that describes some resources you want to deploy in Azure. And so what we do is we, we modify this uh, file pretty often. Uh, this contains, I don't know, for instance, you want to deploy VNet, uh, a network interface, a VM. The, the thing is because we build everything in F Sharp, we have to communicate with Azure and send that JSON file to the Azure API. And if the JSON is not, the, the change you make to the JSON is not reflected in your F Sharp code, things break. And so what we do is we use a type provider, the JSON type provider, uh, to generate the types that corresponds to this structure here. So uh, for instance, here if I say type this, you know, if I'm French, so if for instance I would type bootstrap command with an E at the end uh, and save the file, uh, if I go back to the F sharp code on the right, and just uh, wait a little bit for the intelligence to kick in, Uh, I don't know if you can see, but you have the red squiggly that shows you that it actually is not compiling. And so this is a very simple feature, uh, but it sa saved us a lot of time while we're developing and still when we are making changes to the service. 
All right, so let me go back to uh, the deck. Okay, so another thing that we use is um, asynchronous programming. We use async programming everywhere. Uh, all the code that we have is async. Uh, I believe that it avoids a lot of pitfalls that you face with C-sharp. Uh, F-sharp actually came up with async before C-sharp, but the interesting thing is that C-sharp did not really get it right. Uh, there, there is a very interesting article by Thomas Petricek uh, on his blog post, on his blog um, about um, you know, comparing F-sharp and C-sharp and how they, they both uh, handle async. There's also um, some interesting talk by uh, Lucian Vishik that I really recommend on the pitfall that you have when you do uh, C sharp, uh, when you use C sharp async. And so in my team, I had people who had never done async before, and they were able to very quickly learn uh, how to do async. So one thing we do with uh, async is um, uh, exception handling. So in this code, you see on the, on the left here, what we do is just uh, an operation on Azure that may throw an exception. For instance, here we just try to delete some resources in Azure. Uh, if you just try to write this code like it's written on the left, it's not going to work because precisely because we were in, uh, within async. If the exception gets caught, it gets wrapped into um, uh, an aggregate exception. So if you were to do that in C-sharp uh, properly, you will have to recursively you know, uh, enumerate the aggregate exception and look for the condition you're interested in. But then you would catch all exceptions, and then it would be too late to resume from where you left off if it's not the exception you're interested in. And in fact, what we do in F-sharp is we use active patterns to write very concisely um, uh, the, the, the code that you would expect to write, but that's correct and actually does the recursive enumeration for you. And so you just have to pass as a parameter the condition that you're interested, uh, uh, you're interested in, the, the one you want to match on. And so that's, we use that across the service to do exception handling. Another thing we do is um, uh, the processing of uh, long-running long requests. So in the service, as I mentioned, when you create a submission, we spin up a VM for you in Azure. And so the service has to watch for that uh, VM to be created and wait until it's created and do some other processing. And so you've got to have the ability to trace this execution and um, be able to, um, first of all, not spend an entire worker uh, uh, doing the polling on Azure to wait for the VM to be created, but also if for any reason uh, it fails to create the VM, you want to be able to resume from where you left off. Or for instance, if you, it fails to just wait on the VM to be created, you want to resume from where you left off without recreating a new VM. And so we were able to very succinctly define this um, finite state machine um, very abstractly. On, so this is the data types that you see on the left where uh, we uh, basically define what it is uh, to process a request. So you, you just have a finite state machine. On the, on the right, it shows you how you do it to create a job. So you, you submit the request to create the job in Azure. Then you move to the state to wait for the VM to be created. Then you retry later if it's not ready. And then uh, whoever implements the execution for, the, for this agent uh, can persist the state in, say, an Azure queue. And then um, you know, if the, the request needs to be resumed later, resume from where you left off. And that's something we use for all the requests that we uh, process in the service. Uh, finally, we used uh, very recently Azure Function, which is um, a serverless service uh, on Azure. Uh, so we found that F# -sharp was a very um, uh, was a perfect really programming language for Azure Function. Uh, we we don't have to create objects or we just dump here a let bindings that would process uh, an input request uh, triggered by some events that's posted on the Azure queue. And so there's very few lines of code for us to implement webhooks in the service. So our, ser our service produces a lot of events, and every time some interesting events get uh, you know, created, we notify the customers uh, using that webhooks, using that uh, sorry, um, Azure function. We found that F# -sharp was uh, the perfect tool. We could use F# -sharp Interactive, for instance, to test it and to make sure that it works. We could load uh, uh, libraries and business logic DLL that we need uh, right into the, into the tool. So that was a, a very good use of F-sharp. 
uh, we made some open source contribution. We have a lot of uh, JSON serialization in the, in the product. We're not so happy with the default serialization provided by JSON.net. And so we implemented our own uh, serializer. What you see on the right is, I would say, what an F-sharp programmer would expect as a serialization for the data type you see on the, at the top. Uh, so if you want to contribute, we have some uh, open source contribution to improve performance, for instance. There's some feature request. You can take a look. It's, uh, everything is on GitHub. And finally, I just want to close on recruiting. Uh, a lot of people that I've met at Microsoft um, are concerned about using F# -sharp because of recruiting. They they believe that because there's so little uh, F# -sharp programmers, it would be hard for them to grow a team. In fact, what happened to us is the exact opposite. Uh, when we had to grow. Uh, we started with just three developers. Now we're about 15. We're still a very small team. But when we had to grow, uh, F-sharp was really a good filter for us. Uh, and we did not filter on people who knew F-sharp. We just used it as you know, a way to select candidates who were interested in learning new things. And in fact, most people who joined the team did not program in F-sharp before. They all learned very quickly. They had different backgrounds, some people in Java, some people were hardcore, hard, hardcore C, C++ programmers. And we found that F-sharp was actually you know, doing something differently with a different paradigm was a very good way for us to, to see interesting uh, candidates. Uh, and by the way, we was always looking for new candidates, F-sharp programmers, or people who want to join the team and work on exciting stuff. So if you're interested, feel free to, to contact me. Here's my email address, my GitHub account, and some links if you're interested to know more about uh, the service or about F-sharp, the use of F-sharp for the service. Thank you so much.